Welcome back to IBJJF q and I'm your host, John Medina, and my guest for today's interview is IBJJF world champion, UFC world champion, pride fighting veteran, and leader and founder of the world famous BTT Brazilian top team, Marilla Bustamante. Master Marilla, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm great, thank you. A uh, pleasure to be here talking about Jiu Jitsu, uh, about the history of Jiu Jitsu, and thank you guys for the invitation. Great, let's get started then. You know, um, to put into perspective for people new to Jiu Jitsu, I wanted to start off by saying that you come from an era where if you train Jiu Jitsu, you most likely were going to fight and to defend the legacy of jujitsu against any other martial art, really. Um, what was that feeling like that you had to go into a fight and not just win for yourself, but defend the efficiency of jujitsu and know that you were fighting for something, you know, bigger? Uh, you know, uh, when I was around 18 years old, uh, I went to watch the fight that uh, the first Vale Tudo fight that I, I attended, it was, uh, I don't know if I can call Luta Livre against Jiu Jitsu because one of the fighters that fought uh, against Jiu Jitsu wasn't from Luta Livre. Bruce Lucio fought uh, against Inácio Aragão. He was, I think, Kung Fu fighter. Mm -hmm. uh, but was the, 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 the first challenge that Jiu Jitsu was involved in. So I, you know, and I, I, I had opportunity to, to, to it, it's, it, it became part of history of Jiu Jitsu, this challenge. It was when uh, Marcelo Benek fought Flavio Molina, uh, Fernando Pinduca fought Marco Ruas, and Eugenio fought uh, Marcelo Berg, and Nasser Aragon fought Bruce Lusso. So it was a big show in Maracanãzinho for, you know, thousands of people. And for me, it was amazing, you know. So I, I, I was a blue belt uh, teenager, and I got, you know, very motivated with this challenge. But I never thought I could fight in this kind of challenge, you know. Mm -hmm. So it was a kind of something that motivated me. Uh, but uh, it wasn't my goal in, in life. So when it happens, the, the, when the situation happened uh, in 91, I was a black belt, I was competing as a black belt, I was winning, I was the, one of the, 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 the best black belt fighters from Carlson Gracie. Uh, maybe I was the one that was going to open class and division class, I was, you know, winning a lot of most of competition that was fighting. And I kind of put myself in line to, to, to fight for Jiu Jitsu. You know, it wasn't about fame, about money. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, uh, I was studying in university economic science. And um, I, I, I didn't have any thought in my mind, that I will become a professional fighter or, or coach. You know, I, I love Jiu Jitsu, and when I I, 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 I was, I got my graduation in, in economy, uh, I never worked, so I was totally involved with Jiu Jitsu, and it was after the, the, this challenge. But at the time of the challenge, it was, it was for kind of, myself, you know, to defend the, the, the martial arts that I love. It, that changed my life. It just changed my life. So it was, you know, I was a very insecure kid, uh, very shy, and just to change my life made me, uh, you know, uh, self-confident, you know, able to overcome all the challenges that I faced in my life. And I realized that, that I have, a, you know, a, a a certain uh, price to pay, you can say like that, you know, it was a fort that I, I was uh, glad to pay to help Jiu Jitsu. So I didn't realize what it would be at the time, I didn't realize how big it would 
change in the history. I didn't realize that my name would be in the history. So certain time after that, I was talking to a friend of mine that grew up with me and Carson and became a, 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 a judge in, in, in legal courts, in justice courts, and talking and he told me, man, you wrote your name in the history of Jiu-Jitsu. It was the first time uh, I realized uh, I really did something important because at the time I kind of didn't realize it was just a challenge mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, and it, it, it was the era that uh, the fighters defend their disciplines. So we fight each other's, each, each fighter defend the, the, the disciplines. It was a valetudo era. Mm -hmm. It's not an MMA, in it, you know, MMA came after that. Everybody trained everything. And all the best fighters always train jiu-jitsu. You know, you cannot be a world champion if you don't have a Brazilian coach. Or jiu-jitsu coach. You know, most of them are Brazilians, but the best coach is still Brazilian. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but different year, era, so that you know, it very, it was very, very. I, I'm feel blessed to, you know, to to, to have a chance to, to fight for Jiu Jitsu and help some way. That's the point, you know, to help to be able to help Jiu Jitsu some way. It's one of the best uh, accomplishments in my life. Yeah, and to um, kind of touch on that. You're, you're right. You have influenced an entire generation of jujitsu practitioners with your accomplishments. And uh, for those that don't know, what you were talking about was the was the Grajau Valetudo, right? And yes. um, for people that that may be new to jujitsu or don't know, it was basically a challenge between luta livre and and jujitsu. And there was three fights, and I believe it was you, Fabio Gergel, and Valid Ishmael that fought for jujitsu. And all three of you want. Um, and, and it's so funny because everyone I speak to from that generation in particular, you know, around the office, the referees and professors always talk about how important it was for jujitsu to win that night. Do you, so now that I, I hear you talk about it, I realize that at the time you didn't think it was so important, but now that you have people talk to you, do you realize how big of a deal or how much of an impact you made on uh, you know the new generate the next generation of jujitsu, and uh, generations to come really. Yeah, taking time, you know, uh, uh, I I I start to, you know, uh, the generation, the new generation grew, grew up, and they became good fighters, and they became coaches, mm -hmm. and then I know them, and you know, we became friends because of the same community. And people start to talk to me about it, their experience. And, you know, in the picture of in the end of the fight, everybody came to the, to be the in the ring, ring celebrating yeah. everybody from Jiu Jitsu. And then you can see a lot of young fighters there, you know. So mm -hmm. it is funny. Uh, uh, and I met fighters from different academies, different, you know, that they, they said, man, it was so important for me. I started to pray. Some of them, you know, told me I started to train jiu-jitsu because of this fight. So and, and, and we didn't we didn't know how. And, and, and something curious is that uh, a lot of people didn't believe us at the time. You know, especially uh, they thought we would have because the guy was. You know, the guys from Utarim, they were, they were big, mm -hmm. they, they were bigger than us, stronger than us. And it was skinny guys from Jiu Jitsu, but we, we were tough, you know. And Fabio and, 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 and me and Fabio, we were, Fabio Gugel, we were very polite guys. We didn't use to fight on the street. So Valid had his, his way to, 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 you know, to promote, to talk, and he was more, uh, people, believe that he was a, would be a, a better fighter on the ring than us. And because Fabio was very polite and guy that used to be, you know, he used to fight, he didn't use to fight on the street in, in myself. And 
the same. You know, I didn't use the file, so. And, but after that, the explosion, I can tell that, of people, like, you know, it was all the academies in Rio became full of people, new students, all students returned to training, so it was kind of a, a fever of Jiu-Jitsu. So it was the first time that Jiu-Jitsu, at my time, I don't know before in my era, that Jiu-Jitsu was broadcast in the biggest TV in Brazil. So mm -hmm. it passed in Rede Globo, uh, Saturday night, so noble time. And it was, it was crazy, you know, so weeks before we went to the, to the beach and we were kind of, we practiced, we practiced a, a, a amazing sport, but it wasn't known at the time. It was mm -hmm. a small sport. Jiu-Jitsu was very small at the time. And among our community, you know, inside our community, we are knowing, the best fighters were knowing. You know, but on the street, people don't know us. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't they didn't know us at the time. And we went to the beach on the you know one weekend after. And the beach was everybody was looking at us like, like wow. And yeah. we were kind of weird, you know, the feeling was a little bit because we didn't we didn't used to deal with this kind of you know, famous, oh, yeah. like, people know us, but we didn't know that because we, we, it, was something, it was something that we didn't plan, it just happened in our life. And you were about to fight inside the academy. So the challenge will happen inside the academy because it couldn't, nobody was, couldn't, you know, was able to, to, to organize a show. And uh, a guy, did it and, and put a you know a, a crazy, crazy underground show, you know, with everybody around the ring was kind of yeah. uh, it was crazy, you know. But it works. So didn't have uh, could have a you know a big fight among the the, the the fans, but it didn't happen. Thanks God. So finish well. Yeah. You know, I, I highly recommend anyone that has not seen it. I'm pretty sure you could find these fights on YouTube called Grajau Valetudo. Um, moving on to another really interesting accomplishment that you have. You know, there's only three people in the history um, that I know of that have won IBJJF world title and a UFC world title. Um, it's Fabricio Verdum, BJ Penn, and yourself. Have you ever looked back at that accomplishment and realized, you know, the difficulty of something like that and also how big of a deal that was as well? Yes. Uh, like before, I realized that after did, you know, so after my <laughs> fight, when I got a, a belt, I like, taking time, I, I start to think about that. And I said, man, I, I, I think I, I, I am the first fighter to, to world champion, I mean from IBJJF mm -hmm. to, to grab a belt. So it, it was so, it did for me, it's, you know, it's, uh, the, the word, the word uh, title of IBJJF means a lot for me. You know, I just, uh, I can tell that, you know, I'm not sad, but I'm disappointed that the, the IBJJF didn't, you know, happen when I was uh, a little bit younger, because mm. the first world, the first world tournament, I had 30 years old. So, and then I fought only three, you know, the first, the, the third, and the fourth. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, I, at my time, the, the local tournaments in Rio was a kind of the biggest tournaments ever, you know. The, and then the 93, that happens the first Brazilian mm -hmm. tournament organized by the Federation of Rio de Janeiro, uh, Rio de Janeiro uh, Federation of Rio de Janeiro, something like that. The, the official Federation of Rio, but they my state. And then later the, they launched the, the CBJJ in 94. And then the first Brazilian, the national organized for 
from from the CDJJ. And then only 96. So I mean, it meant you know, a lot for me, the, 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 the title of IBG. I compare with my 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 belt in UFC, you know. So the, the, for me, the biggest titles that I have was the, the World Jiu-Jitsu title and the, the UFC title. So, and then be able to make a combo, you know, it was awesome for me. So, you know, I could accomplish something for me that make me uh, very, very happy with what I, with what I accomplished. Right. Um, as, I, as I was doing research on your fights, you know, I realized that you have been in some very, very high intensity situations, especially from, from that Valetudo fight. Um, but what's so crazy to me is that you always look so calm, you know, kind of like Fedor. You were never nervous. You're always calculated. And I always wondered, um, keeping that calmness in high pressure situations, how do you think that's helped you in, in all aspects of your life? You know, especially right now with what's going on with COVID and, you know, certain people can't open their academies and a lot of uncertainties out there. How do you manage to stay, to stay calm? And how do you keep that, that um, experience that you have from those fights in translated into, you know, your everyday life? Uh, so I, I believe that is a, there are different people that react uh, under pressure, mm -hmm. you know, in a different way. So, I mean, uh, I know some very good fighters that they, when they go to compete, they go so nervous that they can, can you know, they can do their things. They cannot play well. I, in the opposite way, I'm, I'm always, since I was at that, uh, I uh, making a, you know, comparing with the, my first sport when I, before Jiu Jitsu, I was a surfer mm -hmm. and I used to compete in surfing. But surfing depends of the, you know, the, the waves, the, the, you know, something external, it's not only about yourself and your opponent, it's not only the best athlete that's going to win, depend of something else. And jiu-jitsu didn't have that. So when I start to compete jiu-jitsu, I kind of uh, fight, I found myself. And uh, I noticed that I was even nervous during the day of competition day. I could accomplish, I could, you know, I, I fight very well. I used to fight very well. You know, every tournament, I kind of, you know, I, I, I feel myself, my mind working clear, completely clear. Doesn't yeah. matter, as, as, as you said, doesn't matter what kind of situation. It was very important for me. It was always important during my BJJ competitions, but more important during my Valetuda and MMA challenges. Because if I, you know, uh, I, I fought guys, very, very, very good fighters, you know, and if you're fighting an easy fight, it's easy, you just have to beat the opponent, so it's much easier, but if you're going to fight a tough guy, you're going to have a good moments and bad moments. So it's very important you became, you, 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 you be very calm in a difficult situation, because if you got nervous, you start to think, you know, wrong. And you don't think clearly what you have to do. So I kind of stick with the technique I have to do. Like my mind was, I was getting punched in my head, but my mind was liking, looking for the way, you know, the jiu-jitsu way to help me. So, and then it was something that I, you know, it, 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 it jiu-jitsu helped me a lot because when I was a teenager, again, <laughs> I like to train jiu-jitsu a lot. I, I, I wasn't a, a vanity guy. I wasn't a vanity kid. So I used to train with the best fighters at the academy. I was a blue belt, and I trained with guys like Peixotinho and Rosado and Kaique. The guys more graduated than me. Mm -hmm. And they squeezed me. They, you know, they, 
They never hurt me, but they squeeze me. And then I used to play from the ball in different, you know, in difficult situations. And I kind of uh, increase, uh, I develop my, my skills, my defensive skills. And I used to be squeezing, you know, beat it. And it didn't, it didn't affect my, my mind. So I, I believe that I have this kind of skill for myself. But Jiu-Jitsu, the way I play Jiu-Jitsu in the beginning helped me to, to develop and, and, and increase this kind of skill because it's, everything is, is mental. Martial arts is mental. MMA is very mental. The, 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 you know, the level of concentration you must have is very high. If you blink in MMA, you lose the fight. So, it, it have, it, you know, it, this kind of uh, mental, uh, the way that I think mentally of martial arts, I took it to my life, you know. So, talking about the, the, the situation we're living now, the pandemic and the quarantine, when I have to stay home, we didn't know what going to happen. So, it's a kind of very frustrated situation that everybody you know a different world from you know I, I i i left my academy friday night in march the academy was full of people kids everybody training monday morning when i return i closed the doors for four months mm -hmm. so it was from the night to the day like you know it was a weekend change everything yeah and so it's it's, it's something that a lot of business goes to our for good. And you must, you know, Jiu Jitsu, something that helped me to, gave me a lot of faith that, you know, in the end, everything gonna, you know, finish well. So it, 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 it is something that I, 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 I you know, I, I try to, 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 to always, stick with my thoughts you know so I, I don't i don't let the feelings take the control that's exactly the point you know like you said fedor fedor mm -hmm. when he got a belt first time in pride i was there he mm -hmm. made a great fight and he, he got a belt he didn't smile so i don't believe i'm so cold like fedor <laughs> but you know his feelings was like that it's a good example you know and when i was playing on the ring, I kind of didn't let my opponent know what I, I was feeling, if I was nervous, if I was, you know, if he hit me, I couldn't show them in my face. My face couldn't show any feelings because sometimes you see during the fight that the opponent is tired. You can see clearly that the opponent, that, you know, one of the fighters are tired. So it's gonna motivate the opponent because he's, see, he's seeing the, the, the weakness. So, you know, mm -hmm. if you hit the opponent, if I hit my opponent and I feel that he, he, he felt the, 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 the shot, I go over him, you know, straight boom. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know that what is going on, you always carefully, you know, so, and, and during my fights, I didn't feel anything when I was fighting, you know, I stepped in the ring, a kind of man, I'm too calm and say, this thought passed my mind many times, you know, so something goes wrong and, you know, the guy is looking at me, he's going to, he want to kill me, look at his face, he want to kill me and I didn't, I didn't have, I wasn't angry, I wasn't nervous, I wasn't, you know, scared, but I, I was so calm that I thought something went, wrong but in the end everything works well because i just was there to work to put you know my work to show my work uh everything i training put it there on the ring you know so i i could let the feelings away so i believe that the, the, the best competitors they, they have this kind of mechanism to you know to avoid the feelings they got the feelings gonna bother the concentration yeah, I I completely agree. Is is that um 
something that you try to pass on to your students, this mentality of being laser focused and focusing on the task and making sure you don't let your emotions get the better of you? Yes, yes. I try, I, I, I talk a lot to them, you know, all of them, the professionals and then the, the amateurs and then just mm -hmm. the people that attend the classes to learn jujitsu. Uh, so I try to, 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 to talk to them a lot about uh, how to bring jujitsu for their lives. It's very important, you know. All the values you learn on the mat, you know, all the philosophy you learn on the mat, and how jiu-jitsu can help them uh, in the way to get over to... to, to because training jiu-jitsu, uh, you're going to be beaten. <clears throat> you know, if you don't want to be beaten, you stay away from the mat. You know, stay off the mat. But on the mat, you're going to be beaten someday. You know, it doesn't matter how good you are. But you learn, you must learn to how to overcome this kind of difficult and, you know, the beats and, you know, and everything. Mm -hmm. So you can take this for your life, you know. And then I try to, to make them understand that as calm as better. You know, any kind of situation in life, you know, if you, pressure only gonna, gonna bother, you know, if you feel pressure for something, if you want to think clear, so as calm as you can think better, you know, so 100%, I try to, you know, make them understand this kind of, uh, some of them are better than others, of course, but I, I believe Jiu-Jitsu can help all, everybody to, to, to be more rash, rational, you know, to, be, to think better, you more, you be more, uh, control better the feelings, you know, that's mm -hmm. the point. Yeah. Okay. So now I have a, a, a clip for you. I wanted to show you one of your fights. It's the open class final of Brasileiro. And um, you do this really cool sweep. So I'm going to go ahead and, and share the screen here. And I just want to get your take on it. And you let me know if you remember this. It was versus uh, Tata. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a semifinal. Of the, oh, semifinal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it's only an 11 second clip, but we can we can rewind it a couple times to show you uh, basically what you do here. So he stands up, and you kind of collar drag and dive under and flip him over for the sweep. It's really cool. So can you kind of explain to us what you did here? Were you kind of waiting yeah, for him to stand up, or were you already looking for that type of sweep? Yeah, what happens in this fight is uh, that I score one advance. Mm -hmm. uh, he kicked my, my my leg and I put my knee on the on the mat and and the referee scored one advance for him. Mm -hmm. And I was losing. He thought I was very strong, heavier than me. Yes. And I, I kind of pull guard, stand up, and I try to do something. And then I pull guard at this time. And I was trying to, you know, to, 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 to do something I could score a point or to, to, you know, to revert the score. And then when he stand up, I do this position very well. It's a collar drag. I skip my, my hips to the side. And most of the time, I pull, you know, uh, my opponent to the ground. And most of the time, he, he almost hit the, the mat with the face. Yeah, face you know, because yeah. I go to the to the side, I skip to the side and pull his head on the mat, and I go to his back, to the opponent back. That's uh -huh. what happens most of the time. But the Tata was smart when I pull his when they make the the collar drag and escape, he throw his legs to the opposite side. So I had to to change to make a variation, create a variation at the time. So then I I kind of make a combo of positions and I rotate under him it was perfect it was it was the timing you know the perfect time so mm -hmm. i capitalized it was it was one of the best years in my in, in my uh career uh, uh, as a, a jiu-jitsu player you know mm -hmm. I, I won the uh the world 99 and i wasn't super well trained you know because i 
since 96, I mean 95, I was kind of in and out of the mat and, you know, kind of uh, fighting MMA Vale Tudo and returning for Jiu-Jitsu and go fighting Vale Tudo and returning for Jiu-Jitsu. So 95, I supposed to fight Hugo Duarte. Mm -hmm. That was the only Vale Tudo, I mean, uh, Luta Livre fighter that didn't fight in 91 because uh, Amaury Bitetti and Marcelo Berg, that support, one of them supposed to fight him. Mm -hmm. They got an injury, so, and then 95, we was we kind of setting a fight, fight together, fight each other, but it didn't happen. So, and I trained a lot. So, and then 97 was the same. So, and then 98, I returned to compete. My performance wasn't what I expected. I got a silver, uh, I was silver medalist in, in my division in open class. But coming from 98 to 99, I kind of prepare myself straight just for gi. I train straight just for gi. So when I arrived the, 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 the world, I was completely in shape. I was training so mm -hmm. good, you know. And then actually, I, uh, it, this national, it was the first national, the first tournament that the open class was before the division. But what happens before? The open class was in the end of the tournament. So a lot of good fighters that won the division, they want to go home. <laughs> so there wasn't so it wasn't so important for everybody, you know, the, the, to fight the open class. Open class was a kind of the second, you know, uh, opportunity. So uh, for example, Cumprido in 99, he won the open class, but he lost the division. Mm -hmm. You know, so it happened in, 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 in a couple of times. So and I was always talking, you can ask Siriama, you know, Marcelo, I was always bothering them, say, man, you're crazy, you, should, you guys should put the, the, the open class before the division, you know, because it's more important. So the first time they did it, I, boom, I won, I, I won the, the, the open class. <laughs> so I just inscribed myself in open class, I won, and the next day I didn't fight my division. So I was so in shape this time that I even, training that much for the national. My training was for the world. A world of a, you know, a super well-trained, super in shape. So, but it was amazing. I fought the Cumprido. I fought Daniel Gracie, first fight, Cumprido, second fight. Tata, third fight, and Claudio Moreno in the final. So it was amazing, you know, just guys younger than me. I was, I was 90, 99, I was, 34, 33 to 34 years old. It's awesome. Great tournament. Great memories. Yeah. And for this sweep right here, one last thing, a detail I noticed, you kind of cut his leg down with, with your with your left foot. As you're doing the collar drag, it's almost like you're tripping him so he can't step. Was that on purpose too, or, or were you trying to go under him? See, like it looks like you uh, ankle, right? It was... You know, it, uh, actually, I, I, I block naturally, you know, so I, when I, it's not nece necessarily I can use the leg. I just can skip and my, 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 my leg could be in the middle of his legs, but you see how he moves to the side. Yeah. You know, when sure he moves to the side, he became light, you know, mm -hmm. so I make it easy for me to go inside and, and throw him. So... Uh, if he stays still at the same time, in the same place, I mean, I gotta pull his, his face to the, to the mat. And then, I, I, and then I go, I went to, I would go to his back. Mm -hmm. his back. So that's so, definitely a move that you, you've done quite a bit. That's one of your go to moves then. Yes, yes, I have done this position many times. Very cool, very cool. Well, uh, Master Murillo, that uh, concludes our IBJJF Q&A today. Uh, but lastly, I just want to thank you for your time and uh, you know, really being a huge positive influence for generations. I just want to really emphasize and let you know that your accomplishments have impacted a lot of lives in jiu-jitsu. So uh, thank you for that. And uh, before we go, is there anybody you'd like to give a shout out to or uh, let the people know what you have going on? Oh, just uh, 
you know, it's always a pleasure for me to talk about Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, one of my goals in life is help to spread the Jiu-Jitsu world and develop Jiu-Jitsu. You know, not only I'm, I'm teaching, I used to teach seminars around the world, not only for my, my affiliates. Uh, and, you know, I just train every day that we pass this phase of uh, corona, coronavirus, you know, and then we can return the community to get together in the IBJJF and the, you know, the tournaments get together and the life go, goes back to the normal. So that's, that's it, you know. I, I believe we're living the really weird situation this year. And I believe people need to, to return for normal life, you know, to, 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 to train Jiu-Jitsu and Jiu-Jitsu is amazing therapy. And go back to the tournaments, you know, to compete. And, and, and tournaments are important not only for the competitors, for the community, you know, to see what's going on, you know, and the, the, the crowd going to get together, you're going to meet your friends. So it's, uh, it's uh, Jiu Jitsu is an amazing community that you can see that all over the world people got addicted to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So it's an amazing community, and I'm glad to make part of that. And, I, and I'm super glad that I could help some way you know, our sport. Thank you very much for the meditation, you know. See.